I've often described the creation of the original Andre the Giant as a posse sticker as a happy accident. I was searching for something that I could call my own that was an extension of everything I was excited by. The political side of punk rock, reclaiming the streets for your own use of skateboarding, graffiti that was done anonymously but was saying, I'm here, I exist, and I won't be told where I can or can't put my artwork. When I started with the original Andre the Giant sticker, it was an inside joke with some skateboard friends and just something fun to do, but I quickly realized that putting something up in public space was making people curious and had the potential to say something more significant. So I, I wanted to move away from a wrestling reference and an Andre the Giant reference specifically and more towards a broader meaning. I'd say that for the first 10 years, I was really focusing on the concept of phenomenology, putting an image out in public space that disrupts the usual flow of, of what, you, what you consume visually and questions what dominates and controls public space. There's a kind of Buckeye surrealism in big American advertisements with their weird meetings of image and their overlaps and sudden cutoffs and giant signs. And I was doing that through repetition. I was also doing that through subverting and hijacking pre-existing imagery. I loved Orwell, I loved Ray Bradbury, and the idea of this figure looking back at the mainstream giant. A mysterious counterculture version of Big Brother an exploration of, of control, questioning control, questioning the, the giant monolithic forces that we're all subjected to. So facing the giant is confronting these giant issues. Since basically the beginning, I've called my art practice a campaign and the main reason is because I've looked at what I'm doing as a template for empowerment, a do-it-yourself case study in a sense. That tools I'm using, stencils, stickers, digital tools, which didn't exist when I began, take my campaign viral and demonstrate to people that even though they may not have a lot of resources, they're not powerless. These are all tools that can be used on a budget. One of the things I loved about doing my sticker campaign and my poster campaign was that I was actually confronting the giant with my work and saying that with a little bit of courage, ingenuity, and, and, and even with few resources, but with a lot of motivation, you can actually do things that disrupt the structures the giant has put in place. Even though my artwork has evolved from 30 years ago, I think a lot of the principles that drive my work have stayed the same. When I discovered skateboarding and punk rock, the idea of questioning authority, questioning everything, was already really woven into those worlds and, and it stuck with me. I think that my understanding of how to question things has become a lot more sophisticated, but I think that drive to analyze things and look at where forces of injustice exist and, you know, and call them out or encourage people to I'd say cultivate the better side of their nature as human beings. When people ask me, what are the concepts you're working on? They've been consistent for almost 30 years. Looking at the problems of abuse of authority, of, of loss of privacy, of unnecessary war, of environmental destruction, of all sorts of biases for race, gender, sexual orientation, country of origin, religion. You know, all these things that I think we, we all understand are ideals of equality that are not borne out in the way things are structured. You know, I'm pushing against the injustice and for justice with my work because this is how I feel. It's how I felt since I was a teenager and it's, it's how I still feel now.